everybody and welcome to Open Studio on Cape Town TV. My name is Ashley Brandt and welcome to the show. Today I'm sitting with a guest, Jade Gibson, and she's here to tell us her life story, what led her into writing a phenomenal and beautiful life-changing book called Glowfly Dancing. Jade, welcome to the show. How are you doing? I'm fine, thanks, Ashley. Good, um, good, good. And the book is, the book is called Glowfly Dance. Okay, Glowfly yes. Dance, my apologies, Glowfly Dance. Yes, yes. Jay, tell us a little about yourself. Where do you come from and what it is that you do? Um, well, I'm a doctor of anthropology um, and I work on research projects, I've lectured and so on. But I'm also an author and an artist. And so what I'm doing in this case is, is talking about my book, Glowfly Dance. Glowfly which, Dance. Um, which, which basically I talk about in relation to changing people's attitudes um, mm -hmm. around domestic violence, and particularly its impact on children. Wow, that is amazing. Mm -hmm. You wrote a special book which is called, which you've mentioned, Glowfly Dance. Please tell us a little bit about the book. Okay, so the book is, is my story, but with names and places changed, because I didn't want this to be a me, me, me book. I wanted yes. a story that people could really relate to, relate to out there, and also a way of me handling my childhood. Mm -hmm. But the events are true, and the book is, is about, um, as I said, domestic violence and the impact on, on a child who loses her family because I lost my mother due to domestic violence. But it's not a book that aims to sensationalize violence at all. It's about mm -hmm. survival and resilience, about how children get through it. But on the second side, it's also about what society doesn't do. So it's written to really get you to understand. And it is in the form of a story that you read. It's, it's been um, shortlisted in prizes for novels, actually, funny enough. But it's, it's very much about getting people to understand the realities of where society can step in and change yeah. to raise those questions mm -hmm. about what did people not do. Yeah. That's amazing. Tell us, this, this, this book is very intense and it's a very serious subject. And um, it's, 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 it's got to do with where your family was torn into the killing of your mother by your stepfather. That's right. Um, how did you gain the courage and the strength to write this book? If you can imagine a little girl from the age of about 5 to 14 having yeah. to witness her mother trying, actually trying, 14. yeah, trying to get out of an abusive relationship with a very clever, manipulative man in a really patriarchal um, system. Of, and, I mean, this was the UK and North Africa and the Caribbean, actually. We yeah. lived in three places. Um, and, and actually, the um, people being very unaware of really what the situation was like and having yeah. to see your mother I mean we lived in a refuge at one point it's a safe house I think you call it here wow. yes and and I sort of describe what it's like for a child living there as well which was kind of a space of freedom for us but it's it's really to show people what um, what it what it was like so to but to do it it was a very scary thing on the other side because that child watching said, I want people to know what really happens in mm -hmm. these situations. That is not a woman sitting there going, this is fine, I accept it. You know, people can be really trying to get out. And also how you get trapped in these in situations, situation. how children are involved yeah. and how it impacts on them. And I think people don't think about children being caught yeah. up in this. And how mothers are often trying to protect their children as well. Yeah. So I always felt um, people really need to know the truth. And and of course, you know, losing my mother was was it destroyed my family. I ended up at foster homes, and everyone got split up. Um, so really, this one person destroyed our family. And I really felt it could have been prevented if some some friends did things that were stupid, that that made things dangerous for her. Police didn't protect her when they could have. The law courts didn't. Even a psychologist failed to recognize what was going on. So all of this, I wanted people to really see where society let my mother down. Wow. What is Glowflower Dance? Is it fiction? Is it memoir? Tell us about the story behind the book, what it became. Yeah, it's, it's really interesting because um, it, it was written in the style of fiction because I okay. wanted something people could connect with yeah. and read you know I don't want them to be sitting there thinking they're being lectured to for example uh -huh. so it, but it is a memoir as such but it's in the form of something you can really read and um, sorry what was the other part of the question no um, um, what was the story behind what it uh, became yeah so so as I said I think it was it was a very it's interesting because I always wanted to write it I wrote it and um, Penguin Random House and Muzi offered to publish yeah. it 
But um, when Glowfly Dance was actually sitting there on the table, I took a step back where they said, here is your book. I thought, oh my goodness. And I looked at Glowfly Dance it. and I thought, what have I done? Because then I realized that I am part of that book yeah. and there it is going out to the public. To and the you, you think your book's just gonna go out on its own, but no, I'm sitting here talking to you. So actually you're tied to that story. And I, was, I then found that I was having to talk about it. So then I had to own the story as, okay, this is my yes. story. And um, this, is, this is truth. And I had to realize that in actually telling people about the book, I was able to get other people to find a way to speak. So children, for example, I'm talking about teens, and um, I would say 13 up with, with parental yeah. discretion. Mm -hmm. um, and parents, for example, have used the book to talk about violence. Um, yes. Sometimes students have read the book and then spoken about violence to their families that never spoke about it, yeah. that was going on. So what's really amazing is it's got people to talk. And in workplaces, you know, we've, I've done presentations and people start talking as well. And I'm not saying everybody should be there talking. What we should be talking about is how do we deal with the perpetrators. Yes. It's not about women telling their stories and being mm. victims at all. It's very, I'm, I've written it in order to, to try and say, how do we empower people to actually point fingers at what's going wrong, which yeah. is police authorities, mm -hmm. the perpetrators, and not just say it's up to women to deal with it. That is beautiful. Tell me, um, do you mind sharing with us um, a little bit what was it like for you as a child before your stepfather came into mm. the picture? I, that's, a, that's a very good question because in Glowfly Dance, I, um, I deliberately did not want to, as I said, write a sensation story. Yeah. So I wanted to show people how you can have a relatively happy life mm -hmm. that's completely destroyed by abuse. When some, and so my stepfather arrived when I was um, five, turning six. and. We had a single parent family and people, you know, I sometimes sit and I say, you know, you might, I might seem to have a doctorate today and seem this very intellectual person, but I started out in a, what was a council home um, on, on what you call it, we called it um, social security, you call it, um, there's the, you know, we were on government aid yeah, as yes, such. Yes, yes. And a single parent family and I never knew my father who was Filipino. Okay. And so, but we, you know, we were actually very happy and I had a grandfather who loved me and so it starts out with dancing on my grandfather's feet and being a child full of, of dreams and ambitions and then everything changes. Wow, with that note we're gonna have to go on a short break and guys do not go anywhere, um, we'll be back shortly. Good day guys and welcome back to Open Studio on Cape Town TV. Um, we're speaking to Jade Gibson and she's here to tell us about her story on Glowfly Dance, a phenomenal book that she's written. Jade, do you mind sharing with us when did the abuse start as a child, like you witnessing it, when did it start? I think that's a, a good question because it's not as if things go immediately overnight yeah. with abuse. I think as children we picked up very quickly that our stepfather was not a nice person, mm -hmm. but our mother didn't. And you know, because they, they don't have anything to hide from the children, but they obviously hide it from the parent. Yeah. Um, but I, I think it just starts to weave into your life. And, I, and, the, and a lot of Glowfly Dance is about the fact that abusive people are not necessarily, the abuse isn't all the time, it's the fear of it happening again all mm -hmm. the way through, and when is it going to happen again, and, and what form, and a lot of it was emotional, I mean, but extreme emotional abuse, and, um, and then it, obviously, there were times when it was physically very dangerous, yeah. and so, as a child, um, you know, that you don't know when things are going to happen or not, but there's always that threat of when is this going to happen, and so, in that sense, um, uh, it, it runs through basically from the time he turns up. It, it runs through as a sort of growing sense of threat and danger and fear. Um, at the same time, as a child, you, you're always trying to enjoy life. So a lot of the book is about also being able to enjoy life. I also, as a little girl, growing up asking, what is my life going to be like if I'm going to be a woman in this future? Looking at women around, around me and, and actually starting to try to figure out what is it like to be a woman in this world? Wow. And so I've written it as a different name, as a little girl called Mai, because I see my child is my past. I mean, yeah. it, it um, informs me, but doesn't necessarily define me, I say. But, um, so Mai is, is really asking questions, and, and a lot of the book actually is here to raise questions for you to think about and talk about. 
um, with other people, hopefully, to read with as well. And, and ask yourselves, could somebody have helped? What do you do in this situation? How can we change society? And people say, oh, but it's so overwhelming. It's so yes. big. And Glowfly Dance is there to show you if you actually unpack it and take you know, a chapter at a time, say, um, you can start to say, what small thing can I do to, to change awareness? You mm -hmm. know, to start asking questions. How should police deal with yes. this? What can I post on social media? What can I find out more? How do I talk to my children about the possibilities in their future yeah. of this happening? How do I talk to boy children? There's even a boy child in this, my little brother, who was um, also you know, in fear of, of our stepfather. So it's, it's really there to get you to think, but also through a story, and uh, that's the emphasis. And how many kids were you? Was it just you and your brother? Four of us, actually. You were four? Yeah. Wow. So I had half um, siblings as well. And so that family effectively was split up after all of this happened. Um, yeah. And, oh, I meant to say the Department of Education yeah. has um, also recommended the book for education and gender violence. That's amazing. So, yeah. yeah. So it's, it's really about schools needing to know that. To know these things, yeah, yes. Absolutely. To know this and... You've obviously experienced um, being a child in a very toxic family environment. Mm. Um, in your experience or in general um, with family, what do you think it is that family or parents does wrong when they manipulate society or when they manipulate the kids that everything is okay? You know, that's, a, that's a very good question um, because in Glowfly Dance, um, the little girl, I'm going to go back to the girl, Mai, is not is not hidden from the truth. Yeah. It's always, it was always evident that there's something wrong about your stepfather. Yeah. But she's also partly protected in that, that my mother was a really wonderful person. She was very loving. And I yeah. always say, you know, she always fought against this and, try, and she actually was trying to protect her children. Yes. And that's why she died. And, and the, the sadness is, is that, you know, I've gone on to, to manage fine as an adult because I felt loved by her. But at the same time, we were up against odds. The odds were not just our stepfather, but the whole of society. Mm -hmm. So the toxicity is actually what people around were not aware of, um, and they didn't do. And the, and the fact that this could have been a different story, you know, so and that, that, that you really can tell from reading Glowfly Dance, this could yeah. have been different. Absolutely. There's a little chapter um, in your book that I would like you to read. Um, um, I never see my father. Do you mind, Monty, reading us that piece quickly? It's just a tiny paragraph. It's a tiny paragraph, yeah, very tiny, yeah. Um, I think a lot of people will relate to this probably. Um, I never see my father. My father never sees me. But I see with the eyes he gave me, slanted like the wings of gulls flying in the sky. Mm -hmm. And when my mother speaks of Mexico, her eyes mist up with the lights of memory. Mexico was beautiful, she says, mm -hmm. the sights, the sounds, the sea. At night, you could smell the scent of oranges from far away, traveling for miles down from the orange groves, drifting like perfume through the warm night air. The oranges in Mexico were delicious, especially the blood oranges, so sweet and red inside, bright, bright red, just like blood, and when you open them, the juice ran out across your hands and stained them sticky. Wow. What does that passage mean? Do you mind elaborate that to us? Yeah, um, I mean, it's an example of the sort of, as I say, a lot of the book is quite descriptive. We mm -hmm. lived in different countries. And this, this is from the beginning of the book. And it really sets the scene in that it talks about an earlier time of my mother, mm -hmm. the father I didn't know, who was from the Philippines and who had slanted eyes, and which I then became defined by in a country that was actually quite racist at oh. to people with slanted eyes, and kept telling me to go back to my country at the time, and this was the UK, so the book starts out in the UK. And the reference to Mexico is where my mother had met my father. And so what it, it does in a way is it, it sort of shows that this, is, this was a happy period, even though obviously it didn't, they didn't end up together. Um, there was never any sense of shame about me not having a father, you know, and I think that was a very good thing. And it's also about what you see with your own eyes. So, so the eyes that defined me are also the eyes that saw and witnessed this and the, is the person who writes the book wow. as that child, which I've called my in the book. Wow. Your book also has yeah. a very rich layered and underlining themes, which also pictures 
um, the support that your mother received experiencing these abuse. Um, who else knew about this? Friends, family, uh, police? Um, you can, um, in Glowfly Dancer's story, and I'm going to talk about Mai now and her mother. Um, her mother is, which is my mother, um, is trying all the time to get out. But obviously, women are isolated in these okay. situations as well. I'm going to have to stop you quickly for a second. Sorry. Guys, we're going to have to go on the short break. Sorry about that. We'll be back shortly with that question. <laughs> Welcome back to Open Studio on Cape Town TV, and I'm Ashley Brunt. Um, Jade, I want to go back to the question that I asked you, is that where your book it is rich and laid on a very underlying themes which portrays that the lack of support that your mother received. Was there any other family members or friends or the police that knew about the abuse that your mother was experiencing? Um, a lot of people in the authorities knew. Um, okay. For example, we, we lived in a safe house, as I said. Yes. But the safe house is limited when people trace people to that house in terms of protection. Yes. And it's, you know, it's... It's very difficult. I mean, in, in Glowfly Dance, there's a scene in which um, a woman has her, her son taken from the school by the father on his way home. And, the, and she's expecting her son, but it's the father who knocks on the door in the refuge when all the women are there. And everybody's absolutely petrified because mm -hmm. they don't know what to do. And, um, and then you find out, actually, how, how it's resolved, obviously, in, the, yeah. in Glowfly Dance. At um, the same time, um, you know, police didn't take it that seriously um, because it's very patriarchal. I mean, they do they do what the minimum, but minimum they're supposed they to offer do, protection yeah. um, for visits and so on. They didn't. The law courts were slow to respond, um, and in fact, um, there 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 was a, a situation where my mother had to leave the house for her own safety, and she wasn't allowed back in by my stepfather. Um, and my, me and, and one, my sister, one sister got out, but the two little ones were left there. He wouldn't let them back in, so she went to the police station and they said, technically, you left the house. And so legally, you can't demand those children because you wow. left that. Yes, that's what happened um, when she tried. So it's all described yes. in, in the yeah. book. But those are the sorts of situations that she was up against. Um, psychologist who was fooled by my stepfather and thinking he was okay. And then um, the psychologist said he was fine. And within a few weeks, he, he, was, he was actually going for treatment at the time. And he came and abducted his two little ones abroad. So all of these things my mother was up against. And how do you fight something where a system is not really enabling you? Friends who didn't realize and yeah. said the wrong things at the wrong times. She was trying to, we were, when we were staying abroad in the Caribbean, um, she was trying to approach the British ambassador. And he said, we don't deal with domestic disputes. Yeah. And that was at that time when they didn't. I think now they do. But these are all situations where I think that's where the understanding needs to take place mm -hmm. as to, to thinking about what can one do. But it starts, I think, with education yeah. yes. as well. Absolutely. And, and why did she end up in that relationship? Yeah. Because she couldn't see the signs and she probably didn't have enough people around her seeing the signs. You know, and people say, oh, give another chance, yes. whatever. Mm -hmm. And I, I think we also need to, in you know, for younger people to be very aware and debate this, and boys mm -hmm. and girls. I don't think it's about just girls. I think mm -hmm. everybody needs to think carefully. How do we help people, or, or how yeah. do we recognize, or how do we start to question and, and say not what's wrong with a woman, but what is wrong with a man for doing it, or the person doing it, you know, because Absolutely. you do get same-sex um, relationships yes. that are abusive. Yes, abusive, yeah. yes. Yeah. You can, you know, I'm, so we're not ruling out all abusive, you know, it's all abusive situations. What's wrong with an abusive person and not the person who stays with them? Dance is recommended mm. by the Department of Education. It's used um, in the schools now. How does that feel? Um, it's not It's not in the schools okay. enough in that people still need to know. Okay. I mean, it's basically recommended formally and certified as, as useful, but it still needs to be... Um, the schools need to take it up. It needs to, to, people need to know outside Cape Town as well. Um, so it's something people need to, it has been used in university courses, um, a few, but again, more people need to know. And certainly not outside Cape Town, I think. Mm -hmm. They haven't used the book. 
So this is, it's a slow process, and, and you know, it's, it's great to have opportunities like this to talk about this so mm -hmm. people know about Glow Flight Dance and can actually say to uh, their book clubs or their schools or, or to um, groups that they have um, that can we get this book and talk about it and look at it or you know, yeah. use it as a way of, of educating people. Um, or take little sections off it and talk about it, which is another way to think about it. It is in the libraries as well. Yeah. Um, yeah. Amazing, amazing. Um, um, there's a question I'd love to ask you. What was one of the biggest challenges in your experience through this whole experience? Like, like losing your mother. What were some of the biggest challenges for you? Um, I think one of the biggest challenges is that people don't want to talk about it. Okay. And, um, yes, true. Yeah, and, and actually people not knowing how to talk about it. Yes. And yet, in this country, in South Africa, an average of three women a day are being killed, killed. by their partners. True. And that means more than a thousand women a year, which means thousands of children being left without mothers, because we can assume they, they may well have several children. Mm. Um, and. The challenge is why don't people understand how to deal with this? Um, you know, because we all hear the news, we all go terrible. We think it's a question of just get out. And we don't, we need to ask the right questions. We need to think very carefully about mm -hmm. what can we really do? Because it's a complex situation. Yes. Do you feel that um, in society or that the, um, the police is not doing enough? I think. Um, it's, it's really a system because a lot of people have said to me, I mean, I know someone who's being abused, but I don't know what to do. She's, yeah. she's staying in. And I always say, well, first of all, you can't expect, you, you don't go up to someone in the, who's been attacked in the street by someone and say, take the person who attacked you and sit in a house for a year and figure it out between you. Yeah. And that's the situation I think people are in. I think we need to shift the responsibility to the legal system to say if somebody is beating someone up in the house, the legal system has to decide that person's guilty. That's my personal opinion. And not to leave it to the women to say, this person's beating me up, because then she will be punished for it if he doesn't get a, a sentence or something, and, you know, and he might yeah. well carry on and get worse. So um, the challenge is really to get people to talk, to, but to actually as well not to feel overwhelmed and negative because you know people often say but it's everywhere but I always say you know apartheid was everywhere and it took a while but people began to work towards ending it and eventually it ended it's not perfect now but you know the system ended yeah. and and patriarchy and violence is the same until we start to move in very small ways you yes. know it takes a lot of little bits of grain of sand to create a Absolutely. landslide so it's small things that you do that make a difference and you have to really take a positive stand that, that one day we will shift attitudes and Absolutely. things will be better. Uh, before we go, is there any small message that you would like to share to children that is basically mm. going through this that you would like to share to them? Yeah, um, you know, I'm sitting here today and, you know, I can smile and I can laugh and I've, I've you know, moved on in life. I would say to children, to anyone, it all starts with believing in yourself. And if you don't have an adult supporting, you find a good adult, like a teacher or a mentor or somebody to support you. So it's about having your own strength and believing if, that you can make a difference and move in very small ways. Believe in yourself. Amazing. Guys, thank you for watching the show. I'm Ashley Brand. God bless and goodbye.